A very warm welcome to you. Many thanks for joining us on this week's edition of Almond Finance and Wealth Report. Don't forget, we remain your source for all the latest happenings in the world of business. Stay safe is now our collective responsibility, so make sure you do your part. My name is Lucy Ulube. Welcome to the program. On our lineup this week, first we join Faith and our guest, Mr. Shola Tinubu, Managing Director, Skib Nigeria and Co Limited, on the CEO rendezvous for the continuation of their discussion on the impact of COVID-19 pandemic losses on the insurance industry. Speaking during the interview, Mr. Tinubu said that the pandemic will come to an end, but how organizations manage, especially their human capital, will stay in people's mind for a long time. To take a listen. The closest to us are our employees and because they are employees we need to ensure that we can look after these employees and COVID is going to come and go but how you manage it will stay in people's minds for a very long time and we will make sure that with our people we will still be being there. When it seemed that well can we continue paying for a certain group knowing fully well that they can't come back to, to work even once of you. Some of my managers said, if the company will not be, we as managers will take out of us and pay those people continuously. And I, you know, it is that kind of spirit that, you know, that I, I was just so pleased that the kind of managers I had when, when this came to me and said, you know. On the lineup today, we will also bring you a report on loss of employment insurance. In the light of COVID-19 pandemic, it's been estimated that nearly 39 million people will be out of job by year-end in Nigeria alone. For those who will be unfortunate to make this number, loss of employment insurance would have come handy. But not too many workers, both in the public and private sectors, are even aware that the policy exists in the Nigerian insurance market. Take a listen. No, 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 I have not. I'm not aware of the extent of the coverage of that policy. I have not heard about it. Plus, of course, all the other extras we bring you each week on the program. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the lineup. Details in just a moment. Please stay with us. Nobody ever anticipated uh, COVID-19, this pandemic, in fact, in this dimension. But in what specific ways do you think the insurance industry will change going forward in terms of business practices and even product development uh, as a result of uh, some of the lessons we've learned from, from this pandemic? One major thing is that we've learned that, you know, our comfort zone whether it be a physical office in, the, in Suwilere, as we are here now, or in any other place, um, may not always be there for us. And so everybody has realized that we need to use available technology to ensure that we can do our business online. We can also work remotely. And I feel, I feel for the insurance industry, especially for brokers, I think this is something wonderful. They've, everybody has now seen that it is doable. For some of us, we who had already prepared for it at Skip Nigeria and Co Limited, we obviously had prepared for it. However, we had not pulled the trigger because we did not realize, we did not think, we thought there would be all sorts of other problems associated with it, and we didn't know how to ma how whether we'd be able to manage that. But it but it, it turned out that when the when they turned off the tabs <laughs> and you had to do what you had to do. Everybody, uh, you know, uh, many people just rose up to the occasion. We found out that at Skip Nigeria and Co, we were working uh, flat out from home. In fact, there was seemed to be a lot more work, you know, um, working out of home because there were no guidance, there were no rules. Um, people sent you things all throughout the night. Emails were going all throughout the night. Uh, webinars were were going out for training at any point in time during the day, even though you may have thought other things you wanted to work. But, and there are so many things to learn as well about what was happening. So 
obviously those webinars were useful to be able to whether it was on IT, on you know, on COVID, on you know all the various things. And so moving forward, we're seeing first in terms of um, uh, these these particular lessons, a lot of business is going to move online. So the people who were already online, please let them know that that. That place, that market is going to be very crowded now because everybody is moving in there. Now, in terms of products, because people are now moving online with business, then a lot of online protection um, uh, products are going to have to come up. Um, people are going to be off. You develop them, they offer them. Some may take, some may not. Like, you know, if you haven't seen the COVID before and I was offering you COVID insurance <laughs> last year, yeah. it's unlikely that you would have bought COVID insurance for me last year. You know, so you might see a lot of people who have, who have moved online but don't realize that there are all sorts of risks that you can have, you know, in terms of, you know, um, people hacking into your business, cyber uh, the cyber crime, and, and, and very, very importantly, cyber liability, you know, where people can go and shut you and hold you to ransom. You know, some people can come to your, come, get to your line, just hold your servers, hold your clients, data, all of that, and you can't move. Now, before, when you were working manually, it was impossible because you just go to the file. And, you know, but now, all the files now are on that server, and somebody has come in there, broken into your, hacked into your system, and locked you out, then you can't. You find out that you can't work, so you're going to have to. There's going to be. There's going to be issues. What do you? What do you do? How, how do you get out of that? So we're going to be seeing those type of things coming out. And any broker insurer that wants to be relevant to this market moving forward had better be concentrating in those areas because our traditional areas are going to be really diminished um, in, in, in value, in business value, Why all the new areas and new risks are what the clients will want to, to, to buy. Yeah, and so. Okay, now um, there's no, somebody has said, a lot of people have said that there's no uh, ruling out possible future outbreak of a pandemic of this nature or even worse. Mm -hmm. As such, many are suggesting a government-funded uh, insurance scheme to cope with future uh, eventualities. What's, what's your take on that? Okay, um, I think anytime you have any type of loss that would be of, that would affect total society, catastrophic in nature, those are the kind of risks that governments traditionally should intervene in and because sometimes it's difficult for the commercial market to take it on and commercial market is commercial They're based on commercial principles they don't want to take on risks that are going to blow them out of the water if they occur so you're going to have to government then comes in there to help because even if nobody's insured government will still have to look after its people and look after its economy and look after its business, the businesses in that country. I'll give you two examples of what happened in the, in the Nigerian um, case. In Nigeria, we had, there was a time when government set up a, com a company called Nigerian Agri Insurance Company. At that point in time, it was because the risks in agriculture were, were such that were important to all of us, but commercially, it was difficult for underwriters to be able to have enough data to be able to do it. So they set up Nigerian Greek Insurance Company to be able to, you know, be an arrowhead in that specific um, area. And they were subsidizing that. So they used that instrument to be able to do it. Now, many decades ago, that's what happened also in Africa when the company Africa Re was set up. Africa Re was set up by nearly 40 countries in, in governments of of, of countries in Africa and they set it up to be able to achieve this thing you're talking about to be able to support the rising insurance business in their countries uh, as a reinsurer but also to be able to give um, specialist knowledge in certain areas that at that time were not even uh, maybe on the table so for me you need to look at the model of Africa Re again but over a period of time you know, because of that gap, the same gap you're, you're talking about, another company started, you know, raising its head, a company called Afghan Trade Insurance uh, Agency. And what they're considering on oh, this type of catastrophic type of things like flood, and this is where you have like the type that happened in East Africa, uh, was a couple of years ago now, where you could see nearly a whole, uh, two quarters, uh, maybe about half of the whole country flooded under that kind of catastrophe. Those are the kind of things they do. 
And one of the notable things they do is that they do all these specialists as in the terrorism, you know, and things like that. You know, they were very, they were very instrumental to the cover that, that they had in, um, I think, when there were some terrorist attacks in, um, in Kenya. Yeah, exactly. So it is companies like that. And they have approached the Nigerian government. I remember, I don't know the, I don't know what the current position is, but the Nigerian government under the, the just previous um, uh, Minister of Finance, uh, uh, Mr. Adeoshun, was warming up to it to be able to give them support to be able to, so that Nigeria will be part of it, just like we're part of uh, Africa, to be able to cover that. The only problem that we have right now, we do not save when we ought to have saved. When I say saving, I'm telling you that, you know, any, any of these, uh, when you pay premiums into an insurance company to be able to protect yourself in the long run, you're saving because one day something will happen and all that money will come to support you. And then, so are we in a position to do it now or not? It, it will depend on all the priorities of government and how they are able to prioritize. But I think this is one thing they need to put on the top burner. Okay, now, in, in looking at those kind of risks and providing for them, a lot of people have said that oftentimes the insurance industry does not take the lead. Uh, by that, I mean um, they are the experts here. They don't take the lead to guide government as to how uh, such actions should be prioritized and given all the necessary attention before it happens. So going forward from some of the lessons we've learned from this COVID, uh, do you see your industry taking the lead? Because a lot of people have actually said that COVID um, might not completely go away. It might reside, reside but for us to say oh, it's completely gone from, from our society, it's, it's, it will be um, a very tall holder. I'm going to be very careful about some things I, I, I say, you know, about, about, about COVID. But I think one of the things that we're, we're what, I, what we will say is that the, when COVID will end is when really we're going to have a, a cure and not the cures that, the magical cures that, you know, we've been talking about left, right and, and center or and when we have a, a vaccine. So because many of the things that we don't think as important now, whether it's polio, whether it's all those things, that they were potential COVIDs of their time. They are things that could have knocked out our entire economies. The reason we don't see them as that, and we just see one of few people, as what did happen to him? He had COVID, he had uh, polio. It's because it, vaccinations and things that happened, you know, a child is born in Nigeria today. In fact, the very few children that don't have those big um, uh, BCG, these are very few people that, that don't, don't have them. COVID itself, in terms of the health, you know, um, uh, risk with, will be resolved somewhere between the vaccine and the, and, and the cure if one is found or if any of them are found in the future. But you said the insurance industry really should be in, a, in the forefront of advising government on, on some of those, these things. I say it is true, but um, it, is, it is sometimes a, a big challenge advising big government officials who have the power, who have the, the wherewithal and sometimes may not listen to the, the economic advisors, may not listen to that much because they have their own populist agenda. They'd rather pay to the crowds than, than listen to one single soul specialist. Who that is his core business? He would rather listen to the people said. The people said, and these are the people that are going to vote. So sometimes you have that. So it takes a very focused uh, leader who's going to say, hey, look, I know the majority of my people feel this way, but they are feeling from an emotional point of view. The experts in this class are these people. I will take a lot of balanced reviews from them to get a balanced view of the, the technical aspect of it so that we can then progress. We are seeing acknowledgement now, and I, you, you may realize that in, I think it was maybe the last, um, uh, pronouncement of the of our of our president, um, and you know that this president is a man of very few words. And for him, from where he sits, his bird's eye view, he sees a lot of things. He sees banking, he sees oil and gas, he sees all of them. But in this COVID um, environment, he saw what the insurance industry did and how we came out, you know, guns blazing, looking at the, this challenge, knowing fully well it's a challenge for 
for the entire country and he acknowledged, acknowledged that. I see that we, with that, in that environment, this is an environment that we should hold that um, rightful place that you're talking about. As you said, the face of business uh, is changing. Uh, the, the pandemic has, uh, has opened our eyes to a whole lot of things. So for Skip uh, specifically as a company, how has the pandemic changed your, your operations internally and also uh, externally? By that I mean your clients and your customers all over the world. We had decided as a company that you know, sometimes as a company, you are, you are, we are blessed with resources, not for you alone, but for the people that and the lives that you can reach and touch. And the closest to us are our employees. And because they are employees, we need to ensure that we can look after these employees. And COVID is going to come and go. But how you manage it will stay in people's minds for a very long time and we will make sure that with our people we've still been there when it seemed that well can we continue paying for a certain group knowing fully well that they can't come back to to work even what have you some of my managers said if the company will not pay we as managers will take out of us and pay those people continuously and I, you know, it is that kind of spirit that, you know, that I, I was just so pleased that the kind of managers I had when, when this came to me and said, you know. But then we then all moved remotely and we worked remotely. Our clients have been receiving from us. Sometimes we're, even, we're closer to our clients now than we were even before COVID because uh, before they would need to see us in the office. And that's always an arrangement. But now they see us with Zoom meetings, team meetings, um, uh, Skype, uh, and we are, we are there right in front of them without being as intrusive. But of course, there's a lot of issues that we have with it. People have forgotten that during the, during the lockdown, it was a laboratory. It was a laboratory because there were, no, there were no competing things for your business. So everybody was at home, not really doing anything, not going to weddings, not going to other things. You had at home, so they concentrated on your business. Working remotely after lockdown, when people are then you don't have that, you, you are not even sure where your staff are. Your staff may have traveled to UK on holiday. He's working remotely, right? And he'll be working remotely, but sometimes he, he, it may interrupt and, um, um, uh, and, and distract him from, from the business. So in terms of that, we, we're there. We, we also realize that our, our business is going to change. Um, and when you say business is going to change, we are going to have to retool our people, retrain them for the business model that we're going to run. We are not in any way thinking of sending staff away. That's not even in our, because we even have a very aggressive um, recruitment drive. And we're not even taking our leg off the recruitment drive. We're still going ahead. We need the people because the plans we have for the future are significant. The beauty about COVID is it wasn't happening only to you. It was happening to the world at the same time, approximately the same few months. So the next thing is for all of us to then pick up from where it has taken all of us to and move up. And, as, and it's, are you going to be prepared to be able to take advantage of that? Are we going to be prepared to do businesses, you know, maybe outside Nigeria? I mean, I see, I see a lot of businesses, small, small businesses, small hustles, as they would talk about that, you know, selling things, you know, masks online, but I also see that sometimes they limit themselves. I say, why are you not sending to people in Togo? It's the same, it's the same World Wide Web. It's the same, you know, it's, it's the only thing is logistics of delivery. So you have to think about, when you think about that, you know, it says, okay, so is there a logistic solution? Because you're not the logistic company. And, you, and DHL will tell you, yes. Other logistic companies say, yes. Why do you think you can order online from America and it lands here? Yeah. So why can't they order from you in the Republic of Benin? And it lands there, you know, even closer to you than things you're ordering from America. So once you once you get that, that in a, in an online environment, some of those barriers that we had, which were physical barriers, are all gone. And you see, you now see that there's a new world opening out there, new business opportunities opening, and we are ready to take those opportunities. All right, welcome back. Moving on, we now bring you a report on loss of employment insurance. 
This insurance product for workers who have it in place takes care of the insured's financial need for some time in the event of job loss. Happy viewing. Majority of employees globally, Nigeria inclusive, are losing their jobs or getting half pay as both individuals and firms face undoubted challenges due to the snowballing effects of the COVID-19 pandemic currently ravaging the economy. According to the recent report of the Committee of the Vice President, it is estimated that about 39 million jobs will be lost by year end. Although the pandemic has taken the world unawares, some discerning employees have in place loss of employment insurance before now. So, what is loss of employment insurance? Loss of employment insurance, also known as job loss or unemployment insurance, provides income to the insured in the case of layoff. It may also cover a business closing job elimination or other covered separations from employment. Most loss of employment insurance policies don't provide coverage if the insured employee quits, retires or is fired from a job. While loss of employment insurance ought to be top priority for employees in both the public and private sectors, the sad reality is that most employees are not even aware of job loss insurance in Nigeria. When businesses are working normally, then people will be able to retain their staff strength. So if things are not the way they should be, uh, i.e. the companies are not making as much money as they should be making because of the effect of COVID-19, uh, the necessary, there is the only consequence uh, of that, or one of the consequences of that will be loss of jobs. But I do not expect that it will be up to that number that you just uh, mentioned a while ago. Our country can't be like the other country. Even when people lose their job out there, they still have some ways to make it up to themselves. But here in Nigeria, when they lose their job, criminal and much, stealing and everything you know about negativity takes place. I understand that the joint employment labor and everybody have been in contact whereby they can be able to reduce such kind of deficit so that it will not be there. Even though there will be a job loss, it will not be up to that level anymore. Given the impact of the pandemic on the economy and the anticipated layoffs, it is hoped that employees who are lucky to keep their jobs will do the needful by securing the future of their jobs going forward. The policy we need to be carefully looked into. If you weigh the cost benefits and then you think uh, it is more beneficial to take up the policy than not to, then you would rather not take it. But if you think uh, you need to secure your tomorrow by taking up a policy that uh, would address uh, possible loss of jobs, then you, you can take up that policy. I will, but at least I can save up, right? Yeah. I will, why not? I would love to. That's our time on the program this week. I appreciate your spending time with us. Join us again next week for a fresh package. In the meantime, feel free as always to connect with us on all our social media platforms. My name is Lucy Ulube, and until next week, take care and stay safe. Bye-bye.